This is none other than Rocky Balboa himself, Sylvester Stallone. And what I got to say to you is don't go see Creed 3 because I'm not involved in it. And I got to say, if you go see it, it's like you are disrespecting me. So there's some, uh, you know, like food for thought. All right. Uh, absolutely. Uh, don't go see it. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello again. That was a hijacked intro by Sylvester Stallone. He came out. He had to speak his piece. He said his piece. What am I supposed to do? Um, <laughs> welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Movie Thoughts. I'm your host, Dominic Tartamella. If this is the first time you're listening, that's the kind of guest appearances we get on this show, right? We get Stallone himself, uh, you know, speaking from the heart, telling you how it is, right? Um, how's everybody doing? Everybody out there in the uh, podcast listening world, I hope you're all good. Uh, the movies are coming now. We are in that time. It's March. Uh, you know, we got a little taste of winter. Uh, just the other day here in New York, got our snow, a little bit of snow for the first real significant snow, I guess, this winter. So thank God for that, um, that that's over, and hopefully it won't happen again, because that messes with my schedule a little bit. Uh, but the spring is coming, right? March, somewhere in March, it's the uh, first day of spring. I don't remember when that is, right? St. Patrick's Day is coming. McDonald's got the Shamrock Shake, that beautiful uh, ice cream shake that I love. Maybe if you don't like mint ice cream, you may not like it, but they got it. But spring hasn't sprung yet, but it's coming, right? We're going to start playing the Stevie B, the 90s freestyle music, you know, some spring love. Everybody knows. Come on. Uh, But the movies are coming. As I said, the good movies are coming, the anticipated movies are coming the big ones right and it all leads to like the summer months and the blockbusters but it starts here and this is a pretty big movie it's a sequel right and this trilogy of films this spin-off based trilogy of films and that's none other than creed three uh i'm sure it's anticipated by many um it's an interesting uh, – I have interesting feelings about this movie uh, before seeing it and now after seeing it. I will say, if you don't know, that I am a huge, huge Rocky fan. Uh, born and raised on Rocky, Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone, big fan. Um, love all those movies, right? The good, the bad, the ugly – the Rocky series as a whole, right? Rocky 1 to 6, or Rocky 1 to Balboa, whatever the fuck you want to say. I still call it Rocky 6, right? There's some good stuff in there, a lot of good stuff. There's some, you know, some movies that people don't like as much, Rocky 5 being one of them, a movie that I recently talked about on this podcast. If you go back a few episodes, check out the Rocky 5 episode, but for the most part, the Rocky series... I think, is is consistently good. I mean, Sylvester Stallone made such a memorable character, uh, the memorable villains in those movies, Apollo Creed, Clubber Lang, played by Mr. T, and of course, Ivan Drago. That was, uh, I don't know if that was an impression, I don't know what that was, I was doing something there, but I must break you, I guess that's my impression, I don't know. Uh, of course, Dolph Lundgren, great, fucking the man. Um, so anyway, the Rocky series has been spun off. If you're not following, if you're new to Creed and you're interested in Creed 3 and you don't know where this came from, if you're a younger listener, younger movie fan, they started from Rocky, right? Creed 1, Creed 2, spun off. Uh, of course, the character of Adonis Creed, played by Michael B. Jordan, is the son of Apollo Creed from the Rocky films, who... Spoiler alert for Rocky IV, met his end by being beat to death by Ivan Drago in the middle of a ring. Um, shit. I mean, kind of related, but have you ever seen the trailer for Rocky IV? You watch the trailer for Rocky IV uh, when it comes to spoilers and stuff like that, and they don't hold anything back. 
in that fucking trailer, and I might have talked about this on the podcast. I don't know. I repeat myself. You're gonna the more that's a funny thing about this podcast. The more episodes I do, you're gonna realize that I have like early signs of dementia or just forgetting stuff, and I just repeat myself over and over again. And then the final episode is just me bumbling on the microphone, and then later pissing my pants, uh, <laughs> and then passing away. But so I may have said this, but. The the Rocky Four trailer. Jesus, when you talk about spoilers, like in the first five seconds of that trailer, it is he could have stopped the fight. He could have saved his best friend's life. And then like Apollo, they just give it away that Apollo Creed dies. If you've ever seen the trailer, they don't hold back in those older films. They used to give away the whole fucking movie. Uh, I guess they still do that. In some films, you know, but uh, I feel like they would just have longer trailers back then. But whatever, now I'm veering off. So, obviously, Creed is this uh, this trilogy now. And so, Sylvester Stallone was involved in the first one. It was directed by Ryan Coogler, who did Black Panther. I think the screenplay was by Ryan Coogler. Genius idea of a spinoff, right? For Rocky fans, for everybody, for new fans, uh, or potential fans, rather, just a a good way to revamp the series, do it a little different. Because let's be honest, I love the Rocky movies, but how many times are we going to watch him go in the ring, right? It's, you're getting older, you had Rocky Balboa, he did his last fight, I have my problems with that movie, it's not a perfect movie, I'm glad it exists, uh, you know, in the Rocky cinematic universe, But how many times are you going to watch this guy get back in the ring? But to pass the torch to a younger generation, maybe get some more eyes on the Rocky franchise that wouldn't uh, know it existed, they had this genius idea for Creed. And Sylvester Stallone was involved, and he's, you know, basically turned into the Mickey character, right? He's in it, and he's there, and you see a little Rocky, but he's kind of like, he's in the Creed movie. So it's like he steps out of the Rocky world and he's in a Creed movie. So it's not his movie, but he's in enough of it. Um, You know, he gets cancer at one point in that movie. They do some dramatic stuff with that. Sylvester Stallone will kind of like shaved eyebrows and a head at one point. Looks a little alarming. Um, (laughs) Not going to lie. But uh, it's a good movie. Creed is a a good movie and just a a cool way to see Rocky again and, and, and get this this legacy of the uh, the Apollo Creed character with his son, right? Michael B. Jordan does a good job. Good actor, likable. Then you get Creed 2. Creed 2 is a funny thing because I remember like when they were going into production, Creed 2, and hearing about it and then hearing the story points that it was going to have Drago and Drago's son. And that was interesting, right? Because Creed was in a lot of ways, you know, trying to be its own thing, but having the Rocky character in there, that DNA, the Rocky DNA was in there, but it was also trying. And this movie, however you felt about Creed and how you wanted the movies to progress, it was a little, it was like, it was a funny thing, because it was like, it was the next logical step. I think when you look at the whole Rocky franchise and how Apollo Creed died, but then it was strange in a way because it was kind of like a back step where it was like, I, I don't know. I think Rocky's featured even more in Creed two, at least like that story because Creed and Creed two is funny too, because it's like, it's a direct sequel to Rocky four, <laughs> which is interesting. Like getting that so long after uh, Rocky four actually came out, you're getting a direct sequel, right? You're getting to see where Ivan Drago is. Now, you're getting to see even Drago, whatever you want to fucking call him. Whatever he hits, he destroys. Uh, <laughs> but you're getting that continuation. You're getting to see that he has a son. You're even getting to see fucking Ludmilla Drago, right? Jesus fucking Christ. Um, on two accounts there, because, yes, I do know the name of Drago's wife, uh, the character, Ludmilla Drago, and I get to that. I'm going to veer off, let me tell you something. By the time I get to Creed three. Creed 4 is going to be out, so just be mentally prepared for that, because I'm going down the rabbit hole. Okay, yes, I do know Drago's wife's first name, okay? Played by Brigitte Nielsen, okay, who was at one point married to Sylvester Stallone. 
uh, also starting Cobra with Sylvester Sloan, which I got to talk about fucking Cobra at some point because Cobra, I wake up in hot sweats from time to time thinking about Cobra because it's utterly terrifying movie and it's like Sylvester Sloan's kind of Dirty Harry-esque film and the killer in that movie and I don't even know what goes on and seeing that at a young age traumatized me. But we'll talk about that at some point. But let me let me go off on the Brigitte Nielsen, Ludmilla Drago, uh, why I know that first name, like, off the top of my head. So a few years back, um, there was some Rocky toys that came probably around, like, a little bit after Rocky Balboa came out around that time. They made, like, a Rocky line of toys. And it was, like, everything any Rocky fan would ever want, like, your dream. Right, like you, every figure they had, like Rocky with the tiger, tiger jacket from Rocky Two. They had the battle damage Rocky from Rocky Three, and there was all these rare toys too. It was like they did figures for each movie, and then they would do like rare ones. I could talk about that all day. I'm not going to get lost, but my brother was buying a lot of them uh, at one point, and we were buying them and collecting them, and we did sell a lot of them over the years. But my point is, like, he would buy them sometimes by like the box on like eBay, so it would be like a shipping box. And I can't tell you how many Lude Milladragos we had. And that's why that name is just stuck in my head. Uh, <laughs> that we had so many figures that like when I did eventually get around to selling them on eBay, um I would like just pair so many characters with Lude Milladrago, be like, okay, fucking Tommy Gunn Drago uh with Lude Milladrago. Rocky Apollo with Lude Miller Drago. Be like, that would be, always be the third figure to throw out there, but this is neither here nor there. Um, if you haven't given up on this podcast yet, thank you for listening. Because <laughs> as I said, I'll get to Creed 3. But So Creed 2 was a good film, but it was funny, like I said, coming and being a sequel to Rocky 4 and... Um, Doing it in a way which it was it was cool to see those character that character again, especially of Drago and the Rocky Drago dynamic. I know there was a scene cut where they get into like a physical altercation at one point. Wish it was still in the movie. Overall, a good movie. Um, I I don't know if I liked it better than the first Creed. Probably not as strong of a film. The Rocky fan in me definitely likes a lot of it because of the you know Drago stuff. Good movie. I remember um, also in that movie, like, they kind of give Sylvester Stallone um, kind of like an out at the end of that movie. Where it's kind of like he's going to go do his own thing. You know, he goes, he sees, he gets together with his son, and it's kind of like, hey, you know, I'm leaving. You know, it's kind of like they kind of they do it in a good way where it's like they're not killing off the character, but they're kind of like making him walk out of frame, right? And that was... So with that, uh, I kind of expected the eventual Creed 3 when that movie came out, Creed 2, like that it wouldn't have Sylvester Sloan. Chances are. I felt like they kind of gave him his little goodbye. I know Sylvester Sloan was involved in the... I think he wrote maybe story uh, for Creed 2, whatever the hell. Like he didn't write the screenplay for Creed 1. And then at one point in the production, early in the production, I remember hearing that he was going to direct it, and he didn't end up directing it. Somebody else ended up directing it. But So there's that, right? I do remember a funny little anecdote to bring up my brother and stuff like that. When we saw Creed II, you know, we saw it with my father, and we all went out, we made it a guy's thing, we all love Rocky. But I remember we were leaving the theater, and my brother was like, and my brother's a huge Rocky fan as well, but he was kind of like, I think I'm done. Like, he was kind of like, that's it. I don't need... And take that as however you want to take that. His review of Creed 2, his feelings on Creed 2. But it, I think I kind of felt that, too. I kind of felt like, okay, I'm good. You know, I love the Rockies. I watched them for years. But there comes a time when you're kind of like, all right, we don't really need another Rocky. We don't need to see the character again. He's done a lot in these films, um, similar to Rambo which he's done a lot in these films. But I, for the last few years especially, I think I felt like I'll take another Rambo. I'll take like one more Rambo, I think. I think he's got one more in him. But I think Rocky, I'm good. 
But outside of the cinematic storylines, there has been some drama with the Rocky character. I don't know all the details, but I'll try to give it to you in uh, the most basic uh, way. So apparently Sylvester Stallone doesn't, he no longer owns the rights to the Rocky character, right? Whatever deal he signed back in the day when he sold this script and he made this movie, he gave the the Rocky, he doesn't completely own them, right? The, the MGM, whoever the fuck owns them, I think one of the producers. Um, so he, he, that that he can't really, from my understanding of what he said in interviews and stuff like that and uh, you know, Instagram rants <laughs> that he has done a couple of Instagram rants. I know a couple of them have been deleted, but he's essentially saying like he wants this to give to his kids. He wants the rights, the character, and stuff like that. And they they won't give it to him, right? I know Frank Stallone, which is a fucking is great. Follow Frank Stallone on uh, on Instagram if you don't, because he's amazing. Because he just like he's very uh, receptive too. If you like comment, he'll comment back and stuff. He's a cool guy, but he like. He goes to war with people, too. <laughs> and for those who don't know, Frank Stallone is Sylvester Stallone's brother, obviously, who sings, who's a musician. And, uh, you know, people, like, sometimes people fuck with him on, on Instagram and, like, comment stuff, like, call him something, and then he'll comment back and tell him to go fuck himself. He's very open. And he said some stuff about, you know, Creed uh, 3, when it was going to announce, he kind of talked some shit. Even Sylvester Stallone was recently on a show saying like he's not going to be watching it. You know, he's he can't watch it. He's never going to watch it because he. I don't know. Maybe he feels betrayed. I don't know exactly the drama. I'm a big Stallone fan, a big Rocky fan, as I said. So my heart wants to go with Stallone, right? At the same time, I don't know Stallone. Uh, so like, and and also like when he did get involved in this movie. You go back way back to Rocky. He was an unknown. And they didn't want to give him, if everybody knows the whole old fairy tale, they didn't want to give him, uh, you know, the starring role. They wanted the script. He somehow finagled this fucking deal that got him to star in it. Part of that deal was probably what he did selling the rights. And so like now it's kind of like, all right, I get where you're coming from. At the same time, I see both sides of the fence because... You know, he did sell it fair and square. So I, I don't know. I mean, yet again, I could be ignorant to this. There could have been something else that happened. Whatever, right? So now you have Creed Three comes out. Uh, this is a film that definitely I, I think I would have been more excited to see maybe a couple of years ago. I felt like maybe the, the hype died down a little bit. I really wasn't paying attention. And, of course... Um, it wasn't until recently that the whole Stallone drama thing came out that that was, but so that's kind of in my mind too. As I said, I kind of expected Stallone to not be in this one when it eventually came out. Now this movie's directed by Michael B. Jordan. Uh, and okay. So I think this is a good movie. I think it's a pretty good movie. I'll say that right off the bat. Um, I like the returning cast. Obviously, you got Tessa Thompson, Michael B. Jordan, as I said. Um, it, as a Rocky fan, I'll say it right from the get go. It's a, it's a, you feel conflicted, right? Because this is a Rocky spinoff, yes. But I feel like a lot of the the Rocky DNA that this franchise is based upon is not there. It is. So is it a good movie? Did I enjoy it for the most part? Yes. But then part of me felt a little bit like you feel like a little bit dirty to be honest, watching it. And especially like now knowing what went down. I don't know if he had like a beef with Michael B. Jordan himself, but just he's not happy. He's not seeing the movie. You kind of feel like, I don't know. Should I be watching this movie? Because Sylvester Stallone doesn't approve of it. Sylvester Stallone's Rocky. Sylvester Stallone created Ro- uh, Rocky and Apollo Creed. And now I'm sitting here watching Creed 3. That has no approval from Sylvester Stallone. So you start to feel like, ah, should I be watching this movie? Now, that's up to you. Listen, as I said, you don't fucking know. I don't know Sylvester Stallone. I'm not. I'm gonna go see this movie. I mean, out of curiosity. 
I had to see it, right? This movie also stars um, Jonathan Majors, who recently starred in Ant-Man, which I talked about. And this guy, I got to say right off the bat, um, if somebody else was in this role, this movie would probably still be good. Um, I don't know if I would have liked it as much as I did or been uh, as engaged if Jonathan Majors wasn't playing uh, the, the villainous role in this film. Because he's, as I said when I talked about him, man, like he's somebody to watch. This guy's fucking like, he's got a star quality to him. He's got a presence on screen. And even in the couple things now I've seen him in, I just I really like him. He's really engaging as an actor. And uh, very well casted in this role. And it's kind of like... Uh, I'm not going to get into spoilers right now. So you're safe for now. But like... At some times... At some points in this movie... I feel like... Like Jonathan Major's character... Is a, is a much more interesting character... Than Adonis Creed. Right? Like we know Creed's story. He, what he did in the first two films. Stuff like that. Uh, but like... I don't know. I wanted to focus on Jonathan Majors. He just, he's like a magnet, that guy. He just, you want to see, he's got some crazy shit behind the eyes. He's got some ticks in this movie and you want to see what his fucking shit is. I wouldn't be surprised if they go and they, um, turn him into some kind of spinoff. I mean, I don't know if he'd be down for it, but they could possibly do something. They allude to some stuff, uh, at the end, but yeah, overall, good movie. You know, it's a boxing movie, but as I said, like it's it really doesn't feel um, like it's in that Rocky universe anymore, which is probably what they want to do. I mean, obviously they want to separate it. They want to grow. They want it to be its own thing. But as I said, part of it feels wrong. There's almost like, um, I can't explain it, but there's almost like a, at points it feels intentional. You know, like they don't they they don't mention Ro- they mention the name Rocky I think once, right? Uh there was there's no like photo of him. There's no like I'm not that saying you got to stare at a photo of Sylvester Stallone his lips and be, like got to zoom in on it or anything like that, but it's it's like they're doing it on purpose, right? It's like at one point um in the beginning of the movie, they say something about like Apollo Creed giving uh, an unknown a shot. And then that kind of felt wrong too. Cause like, Oh, they didn't even say Rocky. And then like in another scene, they actually say Apollo and Rocky. And I'm like, Oh, okay. They said, they said his name. I don't know if that was, like I said, I don't know if that was intentional. That's the Rocky fan of me. Like, that's the thing. If you're not like a huge Rocky fan, you're going to watch this different than a Rocky fan. A Rocky fan's going to have, a lot of baggage that comes with them. <laughs> you know, you're going to, you're going to compare it to the other films. If you know the outside, uh, you know, drama with Sylvester Stallone and stuff like that, you're going to think about that stuff. I have a, a family member who, who just commented on something. Cause I put up a picture of me at the movies and he's like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not going to see it. Cause of, you know, Sylvester Stallone's on it. And like, he knows the whole drama. So I, and he's a huge Rocky fan. So he probably is going like, he's fuck it. I'm not going to say, it. and like part of me was kind of, Especially when I saw a lot of, like, Stallone post and stuff. Like, I was like, oh, maybe I don't see this movie. But, listen, I'm a movie fucking guy. I'm going to go see it. I'm going to give it a chance, right? Now, uh, they do a lot of uh, interesting stuff. Right from the beginning of the movie, it opens up um, with a flashback. And we get some of the backstory of Jonathan Major's character and his relationship with Adonis, um, Michael B. Jordan. And then... So it's interesting too because it it really does feel like its own movie, especially going and starting the movie with that flashback that has nothing to do with the Rocky uh, movies or anything established prior in the Rocky movie. It feels like its own movie, right? I went with my fiance who has seen Rocky one to four. We recently watched them. I haven't gotten around to watch the other movies with her yet, and we and she didn't watch either Creed, but. I was going to watch Creed 1 with her today. I didn't get a chance. So we went. She went in kind of blind. She knows the Rocky franchise for the most part. But right from the beginning, I knew this was going to be like an easy movie for her to stomach. Like not having the Creed 1 and 2. And, and that's one thing I could say about this movie, which is a positive. is like 
it is a standalone. Like you could fucking go in there with no somebody who hasn't seen any of the Rockies, and you could just watch it as a boxing movie. It's a it's a good movie, but it it does it does feel very separate. Um, so as I said, as you fandom, if you're a big fan, uh, that might conflict with your opinion on the movie. Now, another thing, the fight sequences are very interesting. Um, this, uh, Michael B. Jordan does some interesting stuff with the way, uh, these, these scenes are shot. Um, some of it's good. I think some of it's cool. Some of it, I think, feels a little weird and out of place. You know, they go right into it. They're showing a fight scene at one point. It just feels like they're slowing down stuff. They're doing some punches. It kind of feels like Fight Night. If you ever played Fight Night uh, back in the day on, like, Xbox and stuff like that, when they would slow down and show a punch. Like, that's what it felt like. Some of, the, some of the stuff felt like video game fights. I know he's, I think he's a big anime fan. And, like, he said he got... Uh, some influence with the fight scenes from stuff like that. And there is definitely shots of like eyes and stuff like that, which I think for the most part, most of that stuff um, kind of works well. You know, it kind of like rejuvenates the, you know, age old fucking fight scenes that we've seen in every fucking boxing movie for the last hundred years. There's some cool stuff in there. There's some weird stuff, uh, particularly in the final fight. They do... Some things that uh, don't really stick the landing. But, you know, listen. Um, you go into these movies, and I'm going to get into spoilers now. So, at the 26-minute mark, when I'm talking about the movie for five minutes, <laughs> I'm going to get into spoilers. But, so, warning. Shut off the podcast if you're not, if you don't want to hear it. But, you know, when you watch these movies, you 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 know what the outcome is going to be. I mean, you know that fucking Creed is going to win. It's no different than the Rocky movies. You know Rocky is going to win, uh, or he's not going to fucking get beat to death, right? It just doesn't work like that. It's not the way stories work uh, in in this cinematic world or cinematic universe, whatever the fuck you want to call it, right? You watch Rocky three. And he gets his fucking face beat in by Clubber Lang, right? He gets his face beat in by Clubber Lang. Fucking Mickey dies. He does it, right? And he's beaten, beaten, beaten. And then he's training with Apollo and he's fucking getting his ass kicked. He's not doing good. He's running on the beach. He's falling behind. And then guess what? He starts fucking gonna fly now comes on and he starts fucking running faster and guess what? He comes in and what is he? Is he not going to fucking lose to Mr. T? He comes back and he fucking beats, he whoops Mr. T's ass, right? He's a bitch, Sam. He's a bitch. Hey, why are you breathing heavy, right? <laughs> you know what's going to happen. You're going to see people who did. I mean, I just talked about the Rocky Four spoiler in the trailer, and that's a little different. That is a fucking, they killed Apollo Creed. They should have maybe kept that for the film. But you know, fucking Rocky was not losing to Drago in that film. Just like the second fucking fight that he has with Mr. T, you know he's not going to lose. And the Creed series is no different, right? You know that he's not going to lose this fight. So let's get that out of the way first, right? He's going to fucking beat up Jonathan Majors at the end. And the whole movie culminates to them even fighting. Uh, I think the movie's like two hours. It does pretty good in its runtime, but it feels a little bit like the pace is a little off, right? Because you get a lot of like... You got to you got to regurgitate like so much backstory with them. Then you know they show some backstory in the beginning. They don't show the whole thing. They kind of leave it a mystery a little bit. Then later in the movie they introduce him. He's back, and then um, it starts feeling a little rushed at that point, right? So it's like you get him. He wants to be champ. Guy's been in prison for eighteen years. I don't know where he gets off. Wanted to be champ. I mean that's just fucking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> they do uh, obviously use the uh, the the story element in Rocky One of like, well, Apollo gave Rocky a chance, which is an interesting way of looking at it, and I thought that was cool because that made it a little bit more believable, right? If Rocky, um, you know, one didn't happen, let's say, and I was watching this movie, or they didn't bring it up and remind me that that's essentially what Apollo did, it kind of felt like, all right, like would they just give this guy a title shot? Um, but whatever, it's a fucking movie, right? But anyway, they, they spend a lot of time doing that, getting the backstory, and then it kind of like rushes 
into this fight with this other contender. And uh, then Ivan Drago's son's in it at one point. And then before you know it, Jonathan Majors is champion. And then, I don't know, I feel like there's just... At some points it feels like, so they got this, listen, these guys grew up together, they were like brothers at one point, right? But then it feels a little bit like cheap to feud. Like, as much as they try to make Jonathan Major's character the bad guy, and listen, he's obviously the bad guy in this film for the most part, but like, some of Adonis' motives or emotions are a little bit like forced. You know, like at one point, like I get, listen, he, he fights that um, uh, Spanish dude, whatever he is, he fights him, and he, like, you know, he's cheap, he fucking elbows him in the face, and stuff like that, and then he knocks him out, and he's, like, hurt. But at the same time, like, wasn't this guy, like, trying to be champion? Wasn't he gonna... Didn't you know he was gonna fight hard? So it's weird, because then he's mad at him, because he did exactly what he said he was gonna do. Like, you gave him the title shot. So I felt, like, a little bit mixed on that. Um... You know, it's it kind of feels a little a little cheap, right? It's just like to create a feud. Whereas, like, shouldn't you be saying like, "Yeah, man," like I get it. Like this guy's hurt in the middle of the ring, but he's like, "Hey, man, I did it. I did." It. He's like happy at one point because he won the belts, and it's like, and he's all like, "No," like looking at him shaking his head. Like, would you? I mean, he didn't beat him to death. Like they beat fall to the death. So, you know, maybe you should have been like, "All right, yeah, good, man. All right, he'll get his fucking face fixed. He's all right. You know, he's not dead." So it felt a little forced. Um... And then, like, by the time, it was funny, because then they kind of, you know, what, what is fucking, uh, Michael B. Jordan's got to be, like, my age. I don't know. He's in his 30s, 35, maybe. I don't know the year he's born. But he's not an old man, right? We're not old, right? I don't know. Am I, am I asking because of myself? I don't know. But, I, like, they're kind of trying to age him up in, in, like, talking. And I know, yeah, that's old probably for a boxer to be in his prime and stuff like that. But they're kind of, it's... He, he he's a younger guy and they, uh, constantly in the movie they're kind of like yeah he's old he's you know and then when he's training at the end which in itself is another kind of like rush thing where before you know it they're just gonna fight there's no real um I don't want to say build up but there's it just feels like one thing on top of the other so I think that the pacing with the film is a little off you know but it's like oh he's beaten he's washed up I mean is he that old you know, they want, I mean, they, I guess they want to make it that he's been fighting for a long time. I don't know if, like, how many years he's been fighting in the movie world, but felt a little forced with that. I mean, the guy looks great. He's obviously not fucking, he's in his prime. He's not fucking old. So, you know, he's training at one point. It's showing him, like, oh, at, he's, at first he's, like, failing. But it just doesn't make any sense. You know, it makes more sense. To bring it back to Rocky 3 and like you got to compare it to the Rockies and stuff like that because it's in the fucking Rocky universe. But like when Sylvester Stallone is fucking, you know, not training good with Apollo, right, in Rocky 3 because he won, he just got the beating of a lifetime, like embarrassed. Like he, he loses in like round two, right? <laughs> Realistically, when you watch Rocky 3, he gets his fucking face all fucking like, hey, you know, I'm just training on the bicycle and play piano and stuff like that. I'm a jump rope. And then like he fucking gets his head beat in um, horribly, you know, after coming to the realization that they, that the fight was handpicked. Okay. As Mickey says, and then not only that, but Mickey drops dead. So like he's an emotional wreck. You could relate to the fact that he's an emotional wreck. And, um, you know, he's, his head's not in it. So it takes a little bit for Apollo to be like, what's the matter with you, man? There is no tomorrow. He does all that shit and that, and then he snaps out of it. With Adonis in this film, it's kind of like, why are you having trouble at first? Like you, you were just boxing. I don't know how big the time jump was from the beginning fight of the film to when he's retired, but like, couldn't have been that long. Um... I I don't know that I mean I don't know if they showed it but they I don't know they should have specified more they should have gave him more of a reason to be struggling but anyway he fucking tra- he trains he prevails we know the story it's the age old Taylor you know you go see this movie you're gonna know what's gonna happen you're going to see it. these are the rare times in a movie like this you know what's gonna happen you're going to see a movie and you know he's gonna fucking win 
Uh, but the final fight, yeah, the final fight, I remember it was like, there was like, there had to be like 10 minutes left in the movie because I looked at my watch and I was like, oh, well, the movie's two hours, it's this time. And I was like, it was only 10, 15 minutes. And the fight was like just starting. I was like, wow, this is going to be rushed. And I mean, obviously, these fucking Rocky movie fights, they're all told mostly in montage, so they do jump around, but it felt a little faster than normal. Uh, as I said, there's some stuff they do where they make it like they're alone fighting, and that was all cool. And then it got a little weird, then, you know, at one point, it's like, there's a steel cage around the ring, and they're screaming at each other, and like, ah! It gets... Some of it doesn't work, I think. It was cool. I understood what they were doing with them fighting alone and making it like they're just fighting one-on-one. You felt a little bit more immersed in that. Um, and there's there's a couple of punches in there, particularly the one that goes to um, Adonis' stomach. That was like, whoo, you fucking felt that. Like, I felt the air leave my body. So I, I did like some of that uh, shit. But yeah, I don't know. Conflicted, you know, because... As much as I said all the stuff I said with um, Sylvester Sloan, you know, not expecting him to be in this movie, it just it blatantly feels like that you kind of like pushing it so out of there that you don't even want to acknowledge it. I, you know, what I would have like if if they would have been on good terms with Sylvester Sloan and whatever, if they would have made amends, and it would have been cool to see him in like a scene, right? Like, even a phone call, or even, like, he stops by to talk to him or something. Like, he knows he's down and stuff like that, and he stops by, and he's like, hey, you know, like, this guy, you gotta fight this guy hard, and, you know, like, you're friends with him, or whatever, you know? But, like, none of that. You don't get any of that. And as as much as I'm fine with not having Sylvester Sloan be in this whole movie, it just, it feels a little, it feels a little wrong. These are characters he built, this is a franchise he built, um, would it, does it hurt the movie or would it have helped the movie? I don't know. I, it's not, listen, that scene that I'm just talking about, that imaginary scene is not going to make the movie better. Um, not going to make the movie worse, but it'll, I think for Rocky fans, it would have gave a little something. Do I need a Creed four? So we got six Rocky movies. Do we need to get a Creed four? Um, I'm fine with Creed 3 being the final film. I think that it's a good enough story. Uh, It's an interesting enough story that I I did like it. You had a great villain in Jonathan Majors. He's really like, he, I don't want to say the the whole movie's on his back, but he definitely elevates the movie, having him in it uh, and, and that character. But I don't. I don't know if I need. I don't think I need a Creed four. I don't think I need a Creed four because I feel like these movies don't have to go on. You know, uh, the the one thing I will say, and this is not. This is me liking Michael B. Jordan. I like the guy as an actor. I like him as Adonis Creed. He, to me, he doesn't have. This is always going to sound like I'm shitting on the guy, but like. He doesn't have the, um, in my opinion, (laughs) the same level of charisma as somebody like Sylvester Stallone to go six movies, to make it like I need six movies of that character. Because like, yet again, this is not bashing him as an actor, but like Sylvester Stallone is kind of like, that's that, and that Rocky character is so fucking iconic and 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 lovable, and you know he's punchy. He's got the, you know, like how you doing, Nick? It's it struck a nerve, right? Adonis Creed is not that kind of character. He's just not. Now, I don't, I'm not blaming Michael B. Jordan saying, oh, this guy's terrible. He's a good actor. He's a good actor, but this is not the same character. Those characters, they don't, in, in movies, they don't come around all the time. A character like Rocky Balboa. That's like a fucking, like, beloved. So, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if 
listen, you could do it. You could do six movies. You could do five movies, four movies, whatever the fuck. I just don't know if I have the attention span for that um, to see that. You know, I don't know if I want to revisit the character that many times. I think this ends on a good note. I mean, the guy's obviously going to retire. There is heavy duty um, beating it over the head that, like, he's maybe going to train his daughter. Definitely. I could definitely see them doing a time jump in the next one, the daughter being a little older, maybe giving him some fucking gray hair and him training his daughter and that being Creed Four. I could see something like that. Um, I, I, I mean, that, that could work as a movie. I don't know if I want to see that movie, but that could work. Uh, the character is deaf, and like, that's fine. I'm not gonna like insult anybody, but it was kind of like unexpected. There's a lot of uh, subtitles in this movie, uh, <laughs> you know. So uh, be prepared for that. There's some scenes that are just full on sign language. You know, you feel like you're in a quiet place, and that's fine. That's fine. There's there's hearing impaired people. Uh, you know, for better or worse, they cannot listen to this podcast, probably for the better. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to hear my voice for an hour talking about Sylvester Sloan and saying the same things. But yeah, so there's some of that. And uh, they kind of, you know, give you a little bit of a tease that maybe, you know, she's going to be boxing, which you know, it's not the worst idea in the world. A little million dollar baby situation, a little female boxer. could It could work. He could be a little older, as I said. But I don't see... You know, it's it's very hard with these boxing movies too because Rocky's done it, right? Like Rocky's done it over and over again. It's like how many times do you want to do the same thing? You know, even when you watch a movie like a uh, recent boxing movie, fairly recent at least, Southpaw um, with Jake Gyllenhaal, which is a pretty good movie. But at times it just feels like, okay, we're just combining Rocky storylines and slamming them together and making, you know, this movie. That's what it feels like. Uh, and, you know, the Rocky movies became that, too. I mean, Rocky 3 is essentially Rocky 1 and 2 stuck together, shortened, right? And then Rocky 4 is the superhero movie. Rocky 5 tried something different. Everybody hated it. And Rocky Balboa is like another version of Rocky 1, right? It's like a remake in a way, uh, you know, trying to do like something like a guy who's out of his league getting in the ring with somebody. Mason the Line Dixon. Let me fucking tell you something. I got a Vero, of course. And talk about the villain from Rocky Six again, because whenever I get a chance, um, just a you needed somebody with charisma in that movie. That's one of the biggest flaws of Rocky Balboa. Rocky Six is that the villain in that film is so forgettable and boring. You know, you had a few. I would have had like a Jonathan Majors type in there. Holy fuck! But I don't know. I don't know how many times you could tread the same. Uh, you know ideas uh, then that's the thing with the creed franchise now because as much as it's the third film in this franchise it's the what is it seven eight nine it's the ninth film in the rocky franchise there's nine uh rocky universe movies out there so i don't i don't know like could we do one more maybe we could do one more i don't know i'm not really i'm fine with or without it uh i think that there was good stuff in here I think for the most part, I think if you check your, you know, Rocky love at the door and you watch it as its own thing, it's a pretty decent movie. Um, I think, but I think if you're so engraved with Rocky, um, you might, you might feel a little dirty. Now, my fiance, who's, you know, not a huge Rocky fans, she just recently watched that with me, and she didn't see the two Creed movies. She thought it was okay. She thought it was okay, an okay movie, and I think that's a suitable. It's pretty good. Like it's, it's not like I don't got. I wouldn't say to run out and go see this film. I'm not saying like oh you know, but it's it's a decent storyline. As I said, Jonathan fucking Majors, fuck, guy's great. Um, intimidating. At one point, I don't know, I gotta get this out off my chest, because I just gave a look to my fiancé, too. At one point, Adonis Creed, Michael B. Jordan's, like, pulling a plane on his back. I don't know. Some of the training, <laughs> some of the training in this. Here's the thing, right? The Rocky franchise, I know. Rocky Four is a superhero movie. 
but especially with these Creed movies, they're very grounded in reality. When he's pulling the plane, I don't know what was worse, when he's pulling the plane, or there's one point when he's using a tree, a thick tree as a punching bag, and I was like, you're going to break your hands. You know, like, that's not, like, and no boxer is going to do that. That's, that's like, brain damage stuff. That's, like, Rocky Five. like, what do you think, like, what do you think, I'm stupid? Like, that's like that. Like, you're not going to break your hands on a tree. Nobody would advise you to do that. So, uh, you know, this isn't Kill Bill. Um, <laughs> you know, Kill Bill. Love Kill Bill. Kill Bill is a, is a hyper-realistic fucking martial arts movie, right? But directed by Quentin Tarantino. And she's punching wood, and she's breaking hands, and she says, but dude, this guy's punching fucking a big tree? Like, he's gonna, he's gonna do long-term damage to your hands. But that's it, man. That's that's all I can say about uh, Creed 3. Uh, I mean, I guess it's, it's, listen, it's worth a watch. I know a lot of people in in my circles who are big Stallone fans probably aren't going to run out to go see it. I know that for a fact. And I'm sure that translates to other Rocky fans. They're going to see, oh, he's not in it? Fuck this, I'm out. But there is a newer, younger generation that do know these movies uh, before they knew Rocky. And that's fine. And I think they'll enjoy it for the most part. Uh, I think it's a pretty good story. I think, you know, some of the stuff is... It's a little forced, but for the most part, it works. I think they did a smart thing, uh, however I feel about it, that they went back into the Creed's history and tried to bring some stuff out because it just it made it feel like its own thing, as I said, for better or worse. But that's it. That's a podcast. If this is the first time you listen to the podcast, thank you for listening. Um, always a fun-filled episode. Uh, you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, um, the hell's the other one? TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Dom Solo Reels. That's my name on there. Sometimes I post funny stuff. And yeah, you know, if you like the podcast, subscribe. Listen, I was recently on a podcast, actually Stallone related, with a friend of mine, Ryan, who hosts uh, the It's a Long Road podcast. It's a Rambo series podcast. And we, uh, Right now, he's in the middle of talking about Rambo 3, so we talk about that, and he's also got a Rocky podcast, too, so check that out. Um, It's a long road, the Rambo series podcast. I don't know if the episode that I'm on is out yet, but check out his other episodes, because they're entertaining, and who doesn't love listening or talking about Stallone movies, right? So, thank you for listening, and have a good night.